Okay. Uh, first of all, I, of course, have to thank the organizing for inviting me to uh, this meeting. And uh, I will talk about, in the main part of the talk, I will talk about the work that we actually have done with Boris and uh, our postdoc, Amna Alpina. And uh, at the very end, I will mention some very re recent results with, with done together with um, Valody Kravtsov. But before I start to talk, of course, I have to, I want to, no? Yes. I want to congratulate Boris on his birthday and recollect, as the previous speaker did, um, some very old history, how I have first heard about Boris which was probably the year of 79, if my memory is correct, when um, my supervisor, Tolly Larkin, came back from St. Petersburg, which was at this time Leningrad, of course, and said that he has seen a miracle. He, and the miracle was, uh, as he described it, a boy who was, uh, and he, as he described it, Aronov, who was, as you know, the supervisor of Boris, was drawing diagrams on the board, and this miracle boy was writing, was writing the result in his head, which he computed in his head in, in the real time. So, and uh, what I want to say, what? Was it like that? <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find the photograph uh, of the Boris at this time, and this is the best, what you see is the best possible approximation to that. And um, although, as you know, Boris has changed a lot over time, uh, I still, uh, I, I'm still, I'm, I'm sure that inside him still lives this miracle boy of 79, uh, and I wish that he continues to live there. Um, okay, so uh, now let's go get to my talk. Uh, so my talk, as we were, as requested, uh, as was requested, has two parts, uh, has a sort of general introduction, and uh, then I will talk about the actual work that we have done with Boris. Uh, and in this general introduction, I would like to, dis to describe uh, the situation, uh, the theoretical and experimental situation with in this old subject of Joseon Junction Arrays, which to me look very unsatisfactory. So, uh, and what we are going to discuss, to, what I'm going to discuss in the new part of the talk will be a specific case of Joseon junction chains, which we expect to show very unusual behavior, but not directly related to what was observed, uh, to what was observed in experimentally in large, array, in large arrays that were studied some years ago. So, uh, so it's not, but it's not surprisingly because the regime is different. So uh, these two parts of, to, of my talk are only vaguely connected. The main idea is uh, that, uh, the main connection is that uh, there are some intermed strange intermediate phases which sometimes appear and uh, the standing of these phases in many cases is poor. Okay, so let's start with the, uh, with uh, this general introduction. So very naive model of Josephson junction array is that you have Josephson energy, which is cosine of the phase difference, and which competes with the charging energy, which is the uh, proportional to the, uh, to the voltage squared, and, see, and due to Josephson relation, voltage is the same as the uh, uh, give uh, the time derivative of the phase, and thus uh, these two uh, phase and the, and the, and the um, charging energy are represented by the uh, canonically conjugated variables. And as a result, if you have large Josephson energy, uh, it wins over the charging energy, or the, if you have l large charging energy, it wins over the uh, Josephson energy, and you have basically two regimes. Uh, in one regime, you have, uh, you can call it insulator, that is EJ over, uh, or uh, that 
uh, that is, if EC is very large, you expect that at low temperatures resistance should become infinite. You form an insulator at, at high temp, at uh, low temperatures in the opposite regime, you, should, you expect to find a superconductor. So that's a sort of naive and simple, simplistic scheme. The reality, uh, microscopic reality, is very different. Uh, the reason for that is that, uh, uh, that, uh, that on each island there, is a, uh, there might be offset charge. Instead, that is instead of this charging energy, which is simply quadratic in the charge, uh, you have on each island the offset charge. Not only it is completely uncontrollable, but also it uh, slowly changes with time on the time, sc on the time scales. Well, it depends on, your, on who did the sample and how patient uh, you uh, was uh, uh, the person and how patient you are in waiting for these uh, charges to relax. Uh, but they always, always move. So, well, this is a picture from the work of uh, at NIST and uh, very similar uh, by Zimmerman and very similar picture uh, was observed, for instance, by Europashkin, Euro who is somewhere here in the audience. And you also see the same that if you study individual islands, the charge slowly drifts and some very patient people like this Zimmerman at NIST told me that he waited for seven years and they didn't stop to drift. So, uh, okay, so the one very important uh, thing to have in mind when comparing, when thinking about realistic arrays is it completely uncontrollable and slowly, slowly changing uh, charges here. So let's compare and let's now discuss whether this simple picture that I gave you, what, that I gave you first is indeed observed in the arrays. So in other words, what we, so the disagreement or some puzzle appears it even at a very, very basic level of the phase diagram that is observed, that, that uh, is observed. Namely, in this simple picture, you, it's either the charging energy which means, or the superconducting energy it, it means, it, which means, and therefore you either have su uh, superconductor here or insulator as you change the disorder, or you can also say that you change magnetic field and therefore you frustrate Josephson interactions and therefore you change from insulator to superconductor. However, what uh, I'm going to show you that in many cases, but not very unpleasantly, not in all, uh, uh, there is some intermediate regime which appears in between, which uh, uh, demands theoretical explanation, which is absent. So uh, very first experiments after this picture was, uh, after this theoretical picture was, uh, was publicized, uh, many experiments indeed show something which vaguely resembles e that is either the resistance uh, curves up or down. So, and, uh, so, but also even at this time, there are all data in which resistance remained simply constant. So, uh, oy, my procrustus doesn't work. So what I, uh, so, so, the, the, uh, so this uh, little cartoon, which unfortunately doesn't work very well, shows a Greek hero, as you know, Procrustus, who used to take people in his uh, uh, chamber and either cut their legs if they were too uh, long or stretch them if they were too short. So uh, that's exactly what, uh, what, uh, uh, people try to do to fit the experimental data with this uh, theory. And for instance, here you see very nicely superconducting regime. You see a single point here, and then you see that this must be a quantum critical point between insulator and superconductor. But of course, if you remove this line, well, you see it yourself. So, uh, uh, 
even worse here, uh, in which uh, you do see the same experiments at the, uh, at the non-zero magnetic field, uh, you see that, uh, there, well, naively you would expect, if you look at this picture without these lines which guide your eye, supposedly, so you will say that there is some intermediate regime, and that's exactly what you see on these plots, but that's what is published. So, uh, so the situation actually became worse, but was not completely missed by community because for some um, non-scientific reasons, uh, this work was basically abandoned uh, that, um, uh, with experimental work because uh, these two people, Panitier and Sire, working in Grenoble uh, and studying arrays of some special topology observed a huge regime of EJ over EC in which they see temperature independent resistance. And this regime covered, well, more than one order of magnitude. Uh, so uh, very recently, a very similar picture was observed by uh, Misha Gershenson, who is uh, somewhere here maybe, or maybe not, oh, ah, yeah, here, yes, who observed that in some case, who, uh, uh, who observed that uh, in the wide regime of the, uh, that the resistance is constant in a relatively wide regime of parameters, the arrays that he studied were also very a bit unusual, and uh, what is important is that uh, he measured, actually he represents his results in terms of the gap in this, not real gap, but sort of fit to this exponential activation or uh, behavior. And this gap becomes exactly zero in some range of magnetic fields. So all that, it's not always like that. Sometimes his arrays show this dependence, uh, but some arrays show this strange uh, bad metal behavior. He also, in keeping in tradition with Panettiere and Serre, never published his results. Uh, uh, what? Oh, no, it depends whether it is, uh, uh, whether it depends. No, 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 it, sorry. Ah, yeah, 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 sorry. It's, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, Okay, and finally, something very similar was observed by, very recently, by uh, Bouchia on, for, for superconducting islands on graphene, which is also a very good uh, Joseon junction system. So, to summarize, and that was the end of my uh, introduction, to summarize that uh, uh, many Joseon junction arrays uh, uh, show very wide uh, intermediate metal state. And uh, so in this metal state, uh, the resistance can be differ, differ depending on the parameters on the magnetic field or on the EJ over EC uh, by one or two orders of magnitude. And uh, so, and featureless in the sense that there is no trace of some nonlinear, uh, some current voltage and the current voltage characteristics. So, uh, so it's really like a metal, but on the other hand, as your allies, in this, in, in this Josephson junction arrays, there are no normal electrons. So it is, so the proper way to think about it is that this state is some strange normal liquid of um, bosons or of which if you wish, of Cooper pairs. So now, uh, after that uh, introduction and to the rational review of the unsatisfactory situation in this uh, and our understanding of Joseon junction arrays, let me discuss uh, Joseon junction chains, which you will think are even simpler object. So. Uh, and show and convince you that in this supposedly very simple object, there is seems still something very un unexpected going, going on. So the main point of my the main point of my talk will be 
of this, uh, that there is some non, non trivial, non ergodic, intermediate, non ergodic phase which appears in this Jordan junction arrays. And when, I, when you hear the words non ergodic, you usually think that non ergodicity is something like a glass. But uh, in the sense that it's due to large potential barriers which uh, form spontaneously, and the four are uh, the glass which was made in the form of this beautiful uh, Etruscan vase, or sorry, Egyptian vase, uh, um, remains uh, in this form for thousands of years. But er non ergodicity could also mean something different that if you have strange kinematic rules, such as in this little uh, uh, child model, child, child play, in which you have allowed to move the cars only vertically and horizontally, you might get stuck, you know, like in a traffic jam. So uh, let's go to this, uh, to my, to this subject of Joseph Junction chain and see where non-ergodicity happens. First of all, in this chain, if we discuss thermodynamics, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, so for a moment, I will discuss just the ideal chain. Of course, if we, uh, a bit later, I will talk about the effect of the disorder, which turned on this physics that I'm describing. And this effect will turn, will turn out to be, to be not qualita qualitatively important. And that's very important. So. Uh, so what we know about this Jordan junction chain? Well, first of all, we know uh, what, what is its behavior at, ze at zero temperature. And at zero temperature, the problem can, uh, you can think about this chain as experiencing phase slips, which are exactly equivalent to the vortices in two-dimensional uh, XY model. And therefore, you expect berezinsky kosterle stavros transition at some particular value of Ej over Ec. So here you exactly at zero temperature on the real axis, you expect superconductor. Here you expect insulator. And somewhere here you will say that, OK, that must be quantum critical point. Quantum critical point. So you expect basically the same behavior that I was drawing before. That is a resistance. When you go down here, the resistance goes to zero. Here it goes to infinity. And uh, well, the same song and dance that I already performed. So uh, uh, of course, we have to introduce these random charges. And uh, the main claim, the main uh, claim of my talk is that this phase diagram is mostly wrong. In fact, what happens there is that uh, is that there is a uh, there is indeed a region of good metal, which appears at large Ej over Ec. There is a, some region of insulator, which is here. But what happens at minimum increased temperature is a completely different story. Namely, that uh, there is a line which separates insulator formed at high temperatures from the metal that appears uh, the metal which appears at low temperatures. And the phase in between is what you will call a bad metal. That is, it conducts somewhat, but it's non-ergodic and bad in all respects. So I will give you uh, two types of uh, arguments for this phase diagram. One argument is based on the classical, on the classical, or more precisely, quasi-classical limit in uh, uh, here. And another argument is, is due to numerical simulations, which essentially probe the uh, system along this line. And I will expl ex explain why numeric simulations uh, are some, in some sense weird, that they can probe the system only along these uh, hyperbolas. So and also, speaking about the effect of the uh, charges, this behavior here and all quantitative values, for instance, what is Ej over Ec for, uh, uh, 
uh, for the transition indeed depend strongly on the presence of random charges. But this transition, this part of the phase diagram, which is the most interesting for me, it does not. So let's talk about the first. Let's start with the quantum phase with this transition first. So the argument for that is that uh, uh, look what happens at large EJ over EC. At large, sorry, at large temperatures. At large temperatures, this term, which is uh, uh, cosine of the phase difference, is always limited. So mostly the energy goes into the charging energy. When the energy is in this term, it means that the average value of the charge is also large. And when the average value of the charge is large and, because, and random, in the, well, on different sides, the elementary process, which is generated by Josephson term, which correspond to transition of one pair between two neighboring sides, as shown here, uh, has uh, cost you a lot, a large energy. This energy can be positive or negative. It's not important. Uh, but the fact, uh, but what is important is that in perturbation theory, you start to get large denominators, which are proportional to this difference of charge. But whereas your numerator is always fine, is always fixed, is just Josephson energy. Therefore, what happens is that this, uh, uh, that this term, uh, which you, I mean, if, if you average it over the, well, over the distribution of and, uh, charges corresponding to some finite temperature, what you get is that a uh, typical value of this term is this Ej over square root of temperature times Cc. Square root of temperature appears, appears simply because typical charges are of the square, are of the order of square root of, uh, typical charges squared are of the order of temperature. Thus, uh, you expect that the perturbation theory in this um, term uh, converges if uh, if this term if uh, this is this typical value is smaller than one and therefore uh, yeah, again using the same arguments that were invented first by Anderson and then used for many body localization by Basquale and Ralph Schuller uh, you see that what you get is that uh, this uh, for when this parameter is much smaller than one is smaller than one the per, uh, we get uh, many body insulating state. This argument, so in other words, what I have try argued that uh, this line and this, uh, when it happens is when T over Ej is larger than Ej over Ec, as you see this is squaring this quantity, you get the, this condition. So what I argued is that uh, that this line T over EJ is equal to EJ over C corresponds to real transition into many body localized state. So when I write here insulator, it's really not just insulator, but many body localized insulator. Okay, so, well, one can do slightly better to convince oneself that uh, this is indeed correct by studying the propagation of the, uh, of the wave function of the pair in the forward propagating approximation as a, in which you uh, average over the all pr uh, processes in which the, uh, the Cooper pair moves some distance r. Not necessarily that it moves just step by step, but it may move first here and then there and so, and so you sum over all these processes, over all permutations of these uh, steps, and what you get is uh, exactly the same result which you expected from these naive arguments, and you can even determine the coefficient in this equation. Uh, so now let's talk about what happens when in the phase, in this phase just before uh, just before uh, full many body localization. Uh, so classical systems, classical system seems to be completely trivial uh, because if well, it has 
in the classical limit, you will think that, OK, I have charging energy and Josephson energy. These are two independent quantities, so I can compute trivially the free energy. Uh, however, the equations of motion are not trivial, and uh, because, well, uh, uh, they're not exactly solvable. So the question is whether these equations, what these equations of motion, whether they reproduce, when if you follow the time evolution uh, given by these equations of motion, if you give, get the same result as from thermodynamic average. Uh, so one can actually use for this classical arc for what, uh, to understand what happens in the regime of very large temperatures. And that will be equi classical equivalent what I described for the, uh, uh, for the many body localization transition. Uh, one can use the uh, very similar arguments saying that I have now distribution of the velocities of these phases. And then I ask how the noise, which is created somewhere far, propagates through my classical system. And I, what I will get in this propagation is exact analogy of the, of the denominator that appears in the uh, quantum perturbation theory. Everything is completely equivalent. And therefore, the noise which propagates, and you show, therefore, you, you conclude that the noise which propagates a large distance from uh, the source uh, contains the product of these factors and therefore averaging over this distribution of these velocities, what you get is uh, 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 log normal distribution of the noise uh, of the noise values. So well, what you say is that typically noise decreases exponentially when you go away from the source and uh, 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 so, but then you should ask yourself where the noise is generated at all, because that looks like uh, that everything in the system at high temperatures dies, away, uh, die, uh, dies. But it's not completely correct, because in which you can see by studying more carefully the, what happens in the system if you study proper, if you inc include the fact that there are some low frequencies, or to be more precise, the frequencies which might be in resonance with the frequency of the noise that propagates. And then you immediately see that there are some very small denominators, and you have to be careful with these denominators. So uh, the uh, qualitative argument is that in order to get the chaotic behavior in this system, you need to have at least three islands. Because for two islands, uh, for two islands with two close frequencies or two close charges, if we translate it back into the Jodelson junction language, uh, you you have still uh, integ integrable equations. But for three close frequencies, uh, you can generate you can you expect a chaotic behavior if their frequencies are close. How often it happens? It happens if uh, uh, the uh, if these frequencies uh, are close with, uh, uh, are cl uh, have, uh, have frequencies of the order of which differ by the by unity, and that happens with probability uh, square root of two, square root of t for uh, any pair of frequencies, and therefore t for three frequencies. So you so the, therefore the following picture emerges that you have some rare triads of islands, which happen to be in almost in resonance with each other, this uh, resonance generates a noise, as well, we can easily uh, see numerically. And this, but these triads are rare, and they talk to each other through these silent and dead regions of the, uh, of the space. Uh, OK. so. Uh, so then you, if you ask about, start to ask about physical properties, 
Then you should say that how the transport happens in my system. The transport happens due, or like, like um, electrical current or conductivity happens in my system. Is, it happens in something which resembles very much mode uh, transport in the conventional insulator that you have uh, that some charge which, is move, which, which moves from one chaotic system to another and then to another. And each such motion is associated with the resistance, which is distributed according to this uh, log normal distribution that we discussed, that discussed before. So the sum, of course, of the chain is the sum of the resistances. And that uh, all translates into the, uh, into the prediction that uh, the, resi the resistance of this chain is, ex is has, um, uh, where is it, Jesus. Uh, uh, the resistance of this chain, sorry, log logarithm of the resistance of this chain scales as internal energy or temperature times logarithm of temperature. So um, also this picture means that, uh, uh, tells you that there are some distribution of relaxation times associated with the motion of the charge between these uh, rare triads and therefore, uh, uh, and therefore the properties, the physical properties of the system has this uh, long exponential, uh, relatively long uh, 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 dependence, time dependence of the of the properties. So well then, we check this numerically. And we saw uh, both that the conductance, uh, so that, of course, we saw trivial fact that at low energies, the, uh, uh, at lo sorry, at, at, yes, at low temperatures and energies, the conductance is large. We approach superconductivity, but that's, of course, whatever. Uh, what everyone would expect. But at high temperatures, at high energies, well, not extremely high, you see the energies are still uh, pretty decent here. The resistance is roughly exponential in uh, temperature or uh, the energy. So, but what is even more interesting and important, what we saw numerically, and that uh, is that the relaxation is uh, very slow. And if we study the thermodynamic quantities, such as fluctuation of this uh, internal energy, then and extract it from the extrapolation of these curves to the um, infinite times, then we find that this extrapolation never leads us to the pure thermodynamical result, which is shown here by red line. Whereas these, all these curves correspond to uh, finite time to the, measure, to the measurement of this uh, quantity at finite times. And uh, so if you extrapolate them, they go at most to this dashed line. So there is always some difference between the thermodynamic quantities and the uh, extrapolated ones. In other words, this picture of these triads, which stay, talk to each other poorly, but uh, also their position is, so, is more or less fixed. In t that is, of course, they move a little bit around their position, but they do not move very far. So the system, the whole phase space of the system is broken into different parts corresponding to different position of these triads. At least that's my qualitative picture of uh, this non-ergodic behavior. Uh, you can also, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here I can, well, I, don't need, I do not need the, all the song and dance here uh, at this uh, part, because I can really go to this very far, long times. But if I, uh, but for do, to do numerical, uh, to do, well, these times become, uh, to get, these times become so long that I really need to start to do some extrapolation. Uh, 
by, well, yes, it's not very good to talk about temperature because I'm basically arguing that there is no temperature. What is the right control parameter is the average energy, which is exactly what I fix in, in the simulations. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, oh. mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, uh, so let me now very quickly uh, skip this to the uh, to this part of the on the quantum simulations and just tell you that uh, the reason that we did exact numerical diagonalization to study the behavior of the system in uh, with a fixed number of charging states and uh, in, so instead of allowing the uh, this charge to fluctuate from minus infinity to infinity, we allowed it to fluctuate from minus Q, Q to Q, and therefore, and this is exactly equivalent to the probing the system along this line, and what we saw is uh, exactly the same quantity that is entropy, which we define as a von Neumann ent entropy integrated over the half of the system, is uh, 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 in some, in, in, does not reach its thermodynamic limit in the large range of parameters. That is, we, in this system, we expect the transition to the fully localized state somewhere here, well, here, and there is a wide range of, roughly speaking, a factor of three where the entropy remains remarkably less than its thermodynamic limit. Uh, which is log of, well, because we used just five, five charging states, well, the, that's the, which is shown here by red line. Okay, so since I got somehow out of time, which I thought it was different, let me just go to the conclusions, which you can uh, see here, and I'm ready for the questions. Thank you very much.